would really benefit from what we're doing with 3D printing is the plastic lumber, absolutely the towers you can completely print. There's a bunch of weird 3D printed fittings that you need sometimes, like for example for the, the, the shelves. Uh, if I didn't have 3D printing, I wouldn't be able to do them as easily. Like what, what I did was, so there, the shelves are lined with poly, and you wanted to go from the top shelf to the bottom to the bottom, and then down back to the ponds. So we just feed the water to the top on a timer, and that's automatic. So you're filling, you do bottom watering, the shelves fill up to that much water, you fill it up, and then it drains automatically. Now those fittings are quite unique. So how do you do that um, through fittings? in a, a system that floods and automatically drains. Uh, no existing fitting does it. So what we did, um, it's on the wiki, but the fitting is uh, its basically a tube with a screw on so it, it clamps. It's, it's got the height of it is that with the water level so you can fill it, right? Once you fill it, it spills over the top. Well, how do you drain it though? So I put a little weep hole on the side and, and then so you fill it uh, it, the water over about an hour or two it just drains down very slowly in a little weep hole on each of the, le of the three shelf layers. Now, if I did not have 3D printing, how would I do that? It would be impossible. So, because you've got a, a watertight a screw on with a rubber gasket, you've got the hole and you've got a weep hole. I mean, that, that doesn't exist. So. Uh, it, that was a great example of using 3D printing to make the nuts at that time, that was two, two or three years ago, uh, it made it possible. Otherwise you're in there for like two or three hours trying to manage the water, filling and then draining all your shelves. So it's just uh, the various weird geometries, especially like for water fittings that are very useful uh, from 3D printing. The guys from the Solomon Islands that I mentioned, they're doing high pressure water fittings because they, they can't easily get PVC fittings in, in the Solomon Islands. That's, that's open source, but we'll get some of that and we'll be, I mean, the idea is here, produce like all your plumbing fittings for this eco home, all the aquaponics stuff, plastic lumber. I'd like to produce plastic lumber for the house too. I mean, if we got trash, we, we got plastic lumber. So that's the idea. So for now, uh, let's go right into, back to the topic of, I wanna cover the salt, like we're gonna run those printers finally. So we're, we're pretty far on the electronics, we got to make the connections happen, but, but let's talk about briefly the tool chain of what you do to make the printer run. So you've got the Arduino, Arduino board, that's the brain, you upload the software to the Arduino, and from there, that's the microprocessor that's sending all the commands to everybody. So what you, let's turn this, uh, turn this thing on. So what, what you do is you got have to, one, upload the code to Arduino, and that's just a USB cable. The, the Arduino has a square USB connector. Your computer has the rectangular one you connect it to. Use Arduino interactive development environment. So the Arduino software. It's software that's a programming environment for Arduino, which I'll show you. So it's Arduino IDE. We use version 1.6.8. So that's as that's turning on. And Arduino is a major well-known open source project out there. It produces the open source Arduino boards. Now the chips on that board are not open source. No chips are open source except now with the RISC-V architecture coming out. Um, there are open designs for actual microprocessors coming out. Now that doesn't mean that there's any open source fabrication capacity to produce them. You still go through the same industrial tool chains um, and Lyle actually, um, we we're talking about, uh, let's, let's mention this because it's very important towards uh, open hardware, like open hardware actually does exist, like that actually shocked me, it exists more than we know. So in the telecommunications industry, they use Open Compute Project, which is an open source, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's an open source design for some of the electronics equipment that go into the telecommunications, the phone in infrastructures, complete open source design that all the giants are actually collaborating on to make that low cost. And why are they, why are they collaborating? So they're actually accepting open hardware. Tell us more about yeah, that. So, um, you know, we're trying to keep everyone's <laughs> consumer costs the same, but at the same time deliver more services. 
And so you, you have very few options. So if you're not going to raise the bill, the, the best option is to drive some cost out of the business. And where we find that there's low margins across the supply chain, basically people are making very little money, that's a, a great opportunity to kind of go in and commoditize. And so there's a huge incentive for the industry to, to go in and do that. And open source is kind of your next logical kind of uh, option for that. Yeah, which is very interesting because we hear about all these DIY projects. There's an open core of, of computer computer hardware designs that the big guys are already using and, and basically to lower the costs, which is exactly the case. You, you see that, the, you know, just driving the costs down, but then where do they make their money? Well, they still get their money from telephony, right? From cell phones and all of that. So, so the revenue model for them they don't make money on the hardware, but they make money elsewhere. And it's just like here, we don't make money on the hardware really, it's we make money on education and other services around the hardware. Go ahead. The telecom industry needs to share infrastructure in ways that other industries do not. It, that's, that's true in some sense, right? And there's some debate as to whether they're utility or not, right? But you know, when it's landline, they're definitely utility. Um, and so, yeah, it, and there's also regulations. It's expected like a utility, they're up all the time, those sort of things. I mean, it's an incentive, it's, it's a, uh, incentivized for them to pool resources on building infrastructure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We, we do all the time. That's why you don't see a tower per, you know, telecom company, right? There's mm -hmm. no reason that tower's already up. You know, we share, right? You see a bunch of antennas, those are different tele telecom companies. Right? Yeah. It's not one. And that's an example of like how open source can work. You're just getting costs down for things that should, you know, literally be low cost or literally free. Like things that uh, we almost take for granted. And then you move on to charging people. Like all the new stuff that comes out, there's somewhere money is made still. But it's then you shift more towards innovation on other things. Like you know, going to 5G, 30 times the data rate now. Uh, so you 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 shift your energy from competing on a basics to Increasing the capacity of everybody. So that's a, it's an interesting example of uh, application of open hardware. Yeah. Okay. So open hardware here, Arduino, uh, IDE, in interactive. What is it? What's IDE stand for? Design environment. Development. Integrated, development. Integrated development environment. So you click on that. So launching the application. So so Arduino, IDE. So we're using ver version. Let's you gotta have the folder with the actual program. Okay, so Arduino, we'll open it up. This is the interface where, if you wanna modify Marlin, which is the firmware for the 3D printer, that's where, where you do it. So you open it up. We've got Marlin, which is open source. You can download from our wiki. Uh, Marlin is version 18.08, .08, which stands for the August of 2018. And about the software, it's the, the, the firmware here, which you upload to the board. What we do is just take that, open up this. Uh, I'll show you in the interface. Um, so I already have V18.08 here. So what happens is go to go to file. I mean, just open up, open. Um, so it looks for .ino files, which are the, the Arduino files. So you open that up. And it gives you actually a bunch of tabs. These are all the sub-modules of that program. You care about one, which is called configuration.h. That's where you set all the different things. If you want to modify the printer for different size or different functionality, you go to configuration.h. So you, you tap on, on that. Um, yeah, uh, this desktop projector is not working well to can't hardly see it but there's the code and there's a, just a few things you need to modify and that is things like what is your bed size what is your like what kind of motors like the the stepper motors have for example steps per revolution various parameters um, you don't have to necessarily get into that but the things we change all the time are say you build say we build the large printer on the last day we're gonna change the, the allowable bed size just by changing parameters from say 200 millimeters or like 20 centimeters, which is eight inches to three feet. So that's whatever that is to 3000 
millimeters, uh, or 1,000 millimeters rather, uh, five times as large. So um, that's it. And then you click. So you have to select under tools. You have to select which board you are gonna uh, upload to. So you select Arduino Mega, and then you just click this compile and upload. I just go straight to upload. Now I don't have anything plugged in. If I all I do is use the uh, USB cable connected to the Arduino, and we're uploading. So it's compiling right now, and then it's gonna give me an error because I'm not. I don't have the, the Arduino plugged in. But that's how you do it. You just upload it to the to the board, and that's it. So from there, that point, the only thing you have to do to calibrate it and modify it is to set the Z height offset. That's the that's a pretty much the only thing because everything else, like how fast is the extruder extruding? Like there's a certain number, certain value that we already have in there. That's okay. It will upon each revolution it will ex extrude so much filament. So those parameters are all set. Only variable right now is when you build it, the difference between your, your printers, is everything is identical, you've got the same eight inch bed, but you're gonna have different offset of the Z probe from the bed, depending on wh where exactly you tighten those nuts around the Z probe. So it could be like anywhere from zero to like negative three millimeters, negative five millimeters or something. And you have to type in the correct, correct value. So what you do is when, when we uh, start running, we observe, like when you, we home the z-axis by clicking home, and then we observe how far the, the nozzle ended up from the bed, and you type in that value into, so we set it here, but then through the LCD screen, we can actually change it. So once we upload this to each board, um, you just change it through the interface. So, so what do you do? So that's Arduino uh, environment. Cool stuff, open source. Then you move on to the actual control software that, that runs it, and that's called Cura. There's various types of software that's out there. We use Lulzbot Edition Cura because Lulzbot is our favorite company. They got a really nice interface for Cura, which um, is optimized for Linux. So you would drag and drop your STL file here, stereolithography file. Uh, so let, let me pick out one file such as uh, these are our, so you drag and drop, hey, these are our end stops that we were printing. So you got a bunch of them on a, on a platform. Uh, you move them around. But now you can start operating on doing various things. You hit that button, which, well, I'm actually not, not, uh, Let's see, do I have uh, maybe a long cord? Yeah, no, we'll do it downstairs, but, but idea is here. So now you click print, it'll get you an interface and you can start moving. Like before you, you print, you can move the axis around, turn on the heat bed, turn on the extruder. So what we'll do is one by one, we'll test, okay, there's gonna be, like once you hit print, it'll give you this interface with four arrows. So we can say, okay, move the bed left, move the bed right, uh, forward and back, move the Z up and down, extrude, turn on the heater for the bed, turn on the nozzle heater so you can extrude. It will not allow you to extrude if the, the nozzle is not hot because you don't want to jam it. And what we'll do is one by one, we will test whether each part of the 3D printer is working. So starting with things like as soon as you plug in the thermistors, for example, on the LCD screen, uh, once you upload the code to the LCD screen, you'll see, okay, this is OSCD 3D printer. It's going to show you temperatures and things. So you'll see, first of all, that the temperature should be um, something like around 20 <coughs> degrees Celsius. You know your thermistors are working. You test one thing after another. You can trigger the end stop and see the light turn on and things like that. What we'll do is once we get everything wired up, we'll go step by step. And all of us, just there's a, there's a method. Just test the X, test the Y, test the Z. Turn on your heat, and if everything works, you're ready to print. Now, what's going to be the thing that's that's not going to work? Because we we don't know which direction is going to be moving, depending on how the plug is plugged in, and be reversed up or down, and that will just shift the direction of motion. So when you say click right on an axis, you should be moving right. If not, turn turn off the power, reverse the plug, and make it go the right way. And we do that until it's all it's all good. 
and uh, that's it. So that's the basic procedure. Uh, so there's Cura. Uh, the next step after that is you can download tons of files from Thingiverse or other places, but of course you want to use uh, generate your own files. So what you do is FreeCAD is a good tool, and then you can you can do whatever you like and turn it into a three-dimensional printing file like that. Uh, so any questions at this point? I think we can uh, probably uh, yeah don't need to talk too much. I think we want to get the printers ready as they're almost up and running. Uh, we just got to connect the wiring, connect all the wiring and, and go to upload the software which takes like about 30 seconds or so and run the printers. So that's where we're at. Any questions? Okay, so let's move on to the shop and continue. Yep. I'm making it up now because we're getting made. But can you show us the, the shelf that you designed? So just, just for visual purposes. Uh, the, you're talking about the, the fittings? Oh, yeah. I can show you right now. Uh, go to. Can we bring our laptops to the lab? Yeah, yeah. You want to bring your laptops because we're going to be running our, our printers pretty soon.